This is David Fanola, Senior Director of Engineering at the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute, and I would like to present a brief overview of our new publication titled, Design Guide for Reinforced Concrete Diaphragms. This publication is based on the provisions of the 2014 edition of ACI 318 Building Code Requirements for Structural Concrete. The purpose of this design guide is to assist design professionals in efficiently designing and detailing reinforced concrete diaphragms in building structures. The chapters of the design guide are shown here and will provide a summary of some of the content. Provided in chapter three is general information on how to determine the thickness of a diaphragm based on ACI 318 requirements for serviceability and strength. Included are design aids to facilitate determination of the thickness. Chapter four provides comprehensive step-by-step -step procedures on how to calculate the forces listed here based on the requirements in the 2016 edition of ASCE 7. Information is given how the forces on the lateral force resisting system of a building, such as the wind forces shown here, are applied to the diaphragms. Similar information is provided for seismic forces on the lateral force resisting system and the diaphragms, including the proper application of the diaphragm seismic forces to the center of mass at a particular story level. Transfer forces are also covered in Chapter 4, including the case shown here for a discontinuity in the lateral force resisting system. And for transfer forces to podium slabs. Comprehensive information on how to determine code prescribed anchorage and connection forces on a diaphragm is also given in Chapter 4. Chapter 6 contains methods on how to model and analyze diaphragms for in-plane force effects. Included is an approximate method of analysis and horizontal distribution of in-plane diaphragm forces to the vertical elements of the lateral force resisting system. Beam models for diaphragms are also covered in Chapter 6. In addition to shear and moment diagrams, this method can be used to determine forces in collector elements. Included is an analysis procedure on how to determine the required forces in a collector that is wider than the vertical element of the lateral force resisting system that it frames into. An approximate method on how to determine forces in a diaphragm with relatively large openings is also given. Chapter 8 provides all the design equations that are needed to determine the required amounts of cord, in-plane shear, and shear transfer reinforcement in a diaphragm. Two common construction methods are also covered in this chapter. Shown here is method A for the case where the vertical elements of the lateral force resisting system are constructed shortly after the diaphragm. Construction method B is applicable where the vertical elements of the lateral force resisting system are constructed ahead of the slabs. For example, where slip forms are used to construct a reinforced concrete wall. Comprehensive design and detailing requirements are given for both construction methods. 
Chapter 9 provides a step-by-step -step procedure for the design and detailing of diaphragms, including 10 flowcharts that contain references to the pertinent information from the preceding chapters. Five completely worked out design examples are given in Chapter 10 that illustrate the proper design and detailing of reinforced concrete diaphragms based on the code prescribed requirements for seismic de design categories A through D. The example for the five-story residential building illustrated here provides the complete design and detailing of a semi-rigid diaphragm for transfer forces in a structure with a horizontal structural irregularity assigned to seismic design category D. For more information on this design guide and many of the other resources available from CRSI, please visit ReBARU, which can be accessed using the web address shown here. Thank you for your interest in CRSI resources.